Greetings. Thank you for your interest in CAN's Race Equity Action Framework, or REAF for short, which is a tool that aims to increase understanding about the myriad ways that we, as individuals and organizations, may play a more proactive role in advancing racial equity. I will be helping to guide you through the navigation of our interactive tool, and you may have accessed uh, a link via our website or an email or newsletter, and you just press on the present button and you access the interactive tool. <clears throat> there are many different ways to have an impact on racial equity, but we must first get to a place where we are willing and ready to act to improve how we as individuals approach race equity, to improve how the organizations we work with approach race equity, to improve our advocacy for change at all levels of government, and to improve how we can make the community response to racial inequality more inclusive and collaborative, particularly in light of the disparate outcomes that have become evident via the crises of the last year. So now, how to navigate the tool. Let's first look at the section that explains how to navigate the REAF, which is this button right here. Before getting too deep into the explanation, I'll first uh, let you know a little about our organization, CAN, the Community Advancement Network, by clicking on this tab. And CAN is a partnership of 26 government, nonprofit, private, and faith based organizations that work together to align efforts and leverage resources to enhance community well being. You also see here how we can get more information about other tools and resources CAN has developed and programs we facilitate. So let's go to this back arrow feature here, which you will be seeing me use a lot to get back to this page. The Race Equity Action Framework is a tool through which we have coupled data outlining racial disparities in our local community with information about existing efforts to address these disparities in our community. <clears throat> it's not a perfect or complete tool by any means, but simply a way of visualizing how the various approaches to achieving racial equity connect with each other. In understanding those connections, we might better understand how we ourselves in our organizations might choose to connect with current efforts and support efforts to advance racial justice. <clears throat> the Racial Equity Action Framework is not meant to be a static document. We realize that there will be entities that should be on this list that are not, or data that should be in the report that is not. Just let us know if there is something that is missing or something that should be added. This is a report we hope to update several times a year, at least quarterly. The date on the main page will tell you which version you are using. If we click on this tab for components of the REAF, we see a brief overview of what it is we're trying to share via this tool. We want to share whatever local data we have on the particular indicators being highlighted. We also want to outline the local groups and in some cases state and national groups and initiatives focused on improving outcomes for the specified indicators. Some groups that work on racial justice issues do not fall into any particular indicator or section, so we've created a tab on the main page for these community resources. Now we'll use this back arrow key again to get to the main page. And there it is. And here at the top on the title, you see the date that I mentioned that says this is the March 2021 version. You also see the link to community resources right here, so you can get a better understanding what, of what we mean by resources that cannot easily be coupled with an indicator or subsection of the REAF. We're looking at kind of training coalitions that have a, a broader mission than just uh, a particular um, policy area. Uh, if you're working uh, with particular um, institutions, uh, there may be resources within those institutions that might help you. And of course, we'll list other resources like our Get Engaged podcast that let you know who's doing what around um, racial equity. And I'll go use the back arrow again to highlight the fact that 
There's also a download PDF tab. If you find it difficult to navigate the interactive version, you can go to this um, tab to find um, um, PDFs that you can download for different sections of the REAF. Now the main page is where you want to be to most effectively or easily navigate the race equity action framework. Before showing how to navigate the REAF, I want to just note that we intentionally place the need to address concentrated wealth and power at the center of the chart. You've probably noticed that already, and I will brief briefly explain why. I will only look at a couple of tabs in this section. Please note how I'm navigating the tool. So I'll click on this, on this tab. And you may ask yourself why the focus on disparities in wealth and power. So in this explanation here, you see that the disparities in this arena may be larger obstacles than those that we see in other sections of the race equity action framework. Before diving into the data right, that supports that claim, I'll first point out the basic structure of the race equity action framework that is evident here. You clearly see the, the data tabs right here for wealth and power. And you see the tabs relating to local efforts around uh, those um, arenas of work. If I go to the wealth disparities tab, we find a line chart showing wealth disparity from 1992 to 2016. And you see, again, the, the wealth gap between whites and Hispanics and blacks is very evident. There's uh, uh, other sources we have here, charts two and three. If we click on chart two, there's another source that displays wealth disparities for about a 30 year period, but it's a different source. Um, both sources are for 2019. So part of what we want to share in this tool is data that is as recent as possible, ideally published within the last five years. So I use this back arrow again to get to the navigation page for concentrated wealth and power to illustrate the importance of the back arrow again. And if I click on it one more time, I'll get to the main page. On the left-hand side of this framework, right in this section, we see the approaches to addressing racial disparities that are more institutional in nature. These are approaches where government and nonprofit agencies may be actively working to address disparities and outcomes by addressing basic needs, addressing institutional barriers, and emphasizing education and workforce training. We will look at the area of education since we all in some way connect with that subject as practitioners or as former or current students. You'll note that we divided this section into educational and economic indicators right here. So let's go into the education section. You see here outcomes regarding college success by race and ethnicity and the gaps are very clear. You'll also note that we have data charts for early education, high school graduation. I'll click on the high school graduation tab so you can see how that information is presented. In this chart, comparing graduation rates from 2008 to 2017, we can clearly see a narrowing of outcomes gaps for this measure. I push the back arrow a couple times to get to the education and economic opportunity navigation page. And you see, and there it is. Here we've made the, dis we go to the efforts to address educational disparities. Okay, so here we made, we see the local efforts to address disparities in education and in the tool, we've made a distinction between the groups that are led by people of color and those that are not led by people of color. What this means is that more than 50% of the staff of these organizations are people of color or more than 50% of the board of these organizations are people of color. This particular chart lists the organizations that are people of color led in this field or area, education. If I click on this tab, uh, other organizations, you'll see groups that place a focus on race equity, but that are not specifically people of color led. Um, we do only want to include entities that have a focus 
on race equity, again, regardless of whether they're led or not led by people of color. So I push the back arrow to get to the navigation page for education and economic opportunity. And I'll click it one more time to get to the main page. Well, I clicked the back arrow, but we didn't quite get there. Um, so sometimes you can get stuck, you know, in the slide deck. So if you ever feel that way, there is a nifty feature called the slide guide right here, which is this blue line with a dot. And you can use it to go back and forth. If you click and hold the dot, you can go back and forth, or you can go all the way to the beginning to where the navigation page is located. And there it is. So I'm gonna so so one thing again about the the way the the tool works is it doesn't behave like a web browser where it doesn't um, retrace your step. It behaves more like a PowerPoint slide deck. The other sections on this left hand side follow the same pattern that I just uh, presented for education. Now shift to the left-hand side of the chart, which represents needed institutional changes in areas for additional public investment. Um, on the right-hand side here, um, this chart highlights approaches that can more directly and more swiftly help individuals and families build wealth, power, and influence. The programs and influence on the right side of this chart are those that can more directly expand opportunity for youth and families, these two, expanding opportunity, social capital, community leadership, and shines a light on policies and legislation right here with the state and national legislation tab that have an effect of limiting access to those opportunities that might help someone build wealth and power. I'll use the state, national legislation and policy tab as an example of the importance of removing barriers to success in higher ed. So I'll click on that tab. When we look at it, the education tab on the previous section, we noted the challenges and successes in terms of high school graduation and college success. College success, you may recall, had the largest outcomes gap. We'll look at two charts to emphasize the importance of paying attention to legislation and policy. So I'll look at the tab regarding racial disparities and access to higher education and specifically the issue of tuition here, which you can see has an impact on diversity in higher ed. The, great, the greater the tuition increase, the less diverse the campus becomes is what this chart shows and if we click on disparities regarding loan debt this chart shows loan default rates in major majority white zip codes the dark tabs versus loan default rates in majority minority zip codes in these cities and you see the disparities there so when we hear about efforts to increase tuition and increase financial aid then we see the kind of impact that has that that has on racial disparities, and it's not a positive one. I'll click on the last tab on how to navigate this tool by going to, first I'm gonna go all the way back to the beginning uh, so I can get back to the main page using the slide guide, I'm gonna go the last thing I'm going to show is this expanding opportunity section. And on this section, um, we list the kinds of opportunities that research shows are useful in helping families build wealth and achieve self-sufficiency. Um, and then you see home ownership, entrepreneurship, early childhood, out of school time, college preparation and uh, fun. Uh, funds for paying for college, et cetera. 
And so I'm going to go as deep as I can to illustrate how to get back to the start if we get stuck. And so I'll click on this last tab called disparities and out of school time. And I'll click on the local efforts. So, so in this case, we have the data part and the local efforts embedded and you see that we have a listing of a few local organizations working on this arena. And you'll notice this one has less number of groups listed, which again suggests in this tool that we may need more groups or more support in this arena if we don't have enough groups focused on it. So again, I'm gonna use the slide guide again, instead of the back arrow, since I'm about halfway through the slide deck and go to the very beginning. Well, that's a quick and dirty tutorial on navigating the race equity action framework. We hope that you find it to be a useful resource and please don't hesitate to contact Ken using the email address info at canatx.org. If you would like a presentation on the race equity action framework, if you have questions about any of the information that is shared, or if you have suggested additions or revisions to the content. Thank you for your time and interest.